I'm the executive director of the 19th Century Charitable Association, which is located in Oak Park, Illinois. We're so happy to have you tonight. The mission of our organization is strengthening our community through learning, giving, and the sharing of our landmark building. You're in a proverbial tree tonight with our Notable Neighbors program. And before I introduce our program presenters, just want to let you know if you are intrigued by something you heard tonight and want to ask a question about it or you have a comment about it, you can do so by leaving a comment or question in our uh, comments field or our Q&A field. And at the end of the program, if there is time, we will unmute you and you can ask your question to the gentleman yourself. But at this time, we are going to welcome to the program Al Parcham, who is the board president. Hi, Al. Hello. Hi, Erin. Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you for joining the Notable Neighbors series tonight. Um, the, the series has a very simple premise. If you live in a community for a while, you get to know a lot of people and sometimes you realize, well, that person's doing something really interesting. I wonder if others know about it. And what, we've, what we decided to do is try to start a series that will interview people who are neighbors who are doing some interesting things. So after you hear this program, after you've thought about it for a while, if you have someone you'd like to recommend as a notable neighbor or uh, your self nominate, your, um, that would be fine. So contact Aaron Payton or myself at the 19th Century Club and we'd be happy to take nominees. We have three programs uh, this fall and then we're gonna take a break see what the reaction to the, what to the series has been and decide whether we'll start up in the spring sometime. So tonight is, uh, tonight's guest is my neighbor of about three doors down from where I'm sitting right now. Uh, Lamar Johnson has, uh, I got to know first as a neighbor uh, at black parties and progressive dinners and that sort of stuff. And uh, the more I heard about what he was doing and his approach to his work, he sounded like someone that we should consider for this uh, program. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Lamar Johnson. Hey, Lamar. Hey, thanks, Al. I, I, I feel so successful right now that I've broken out of my, my normal Luddite uh, abilities and I've, <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually gotten on, so I'm, I'm, right. I'm glad it started out well. Well, Lamar, I wanna start uh, because I was putting together this, uh, these questions a few weeks ago, and uh, I opened my cranes, and there's an ad for Lamar Johnson Collaborative. And uh, at the end of that ad, you say, we are passionate about improving the quality of people's lives through the spaces we create. And we're going to be really look forward to hearing about that tonight, uh, because it's a, it's a great mission. Um, and we uh, enjoy, uh, I'm in, looking forward to asking you some questions. So let's start out just by going back to some of the early questions. What led you to pursue uh, a career as an architect? Um, well, I always, I always like to, to draw and sketch buildings, even as a, like a fifth or sixth grader. I just, I, I was always fascinated with it and, and, uh, and then I, I can distinctly remember when I was in, in college, I was working for my uncle's construction company and we were out and uh, we were doing footings and foundations for what was going to be an elementary school. And none of the dimensions made any sense. I mean, they didn't add up. We couldn't, we couldn't figure out how to do it. And my uncle said, you know what you ought to do, Lamar? You ought to be the architect because the architect is the guy that figures this stuff out and this guy didn't do it very well. Uh, and I've always remembered that and, uh, and always, always held it closely. And, and uh, so that, that's why I got into it. I just, I thought it was a, I thought it was a, a, a really great path for me. Did it, did, did your career develop as you thought it would? Um, I would say not. Uh, you know, I, I'm the first one out of my family that, that's, that's gone to, that went to college. And so I didn't really understand all the nuances of the application process. I, I applied to the University of Colorado. I showed up there and I said, I said, where do I go to be an architect? And they said, where are you from? Um, 
And I, I said, you know, I said the country and they said, wow, well, listen, here's the deal. You're in arts and sciences undefined. You don't have a major. So that was the start to my, my career. Um, I, and then I, I, trans, I, I was able to transfer into the School of Environmental Design. There was no architecture school at the University of Colorado, I found out, which, is, which made the, uh, the advisors even, even more uh, humorous with, with my plight. So, um, but along the way, I, I became an architect. Uh, I, you know, I studied for all the tests and, uh, uh, and, and ultimately uh, got, got progressively uh, more senior in, in organizations and, and, and really got to do a lot of amazing projects. Um, you were relatively young, it seems like, when you were asked to take a position here in Chicago, building an office for a major architectural firm. Why did you do it? Why did you take um, it? Well, there's a, there's a, so there's a couple of things in there. One was uh, that I, uh, I had decided that uh, I was, that I wanted to, I wanted to expand my boundaries a little bit. And my wife, Lisa and I had, always, had always said that we, if we had a chance to go to Chicago for whatever reason we would, and we had never been to Chicago. I mean, <laughs> just, you know, so it was sort of interesting. Uh, and frankly, the, the chairman of my, of my company, the founder, Arthur Gensler, called me up and he said, <clears throat> he said, listen, I think you'd be great uh, <clears throat> in Chicago. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to sit there. And I said, Arthur, we don't have an office in Chicago. And he said, I know that, Lamar. That's why I'm calling you. <laughs> <clears throat> so I was fortunate that he didn't, he didn't uh, move on without me because he, he uh, should have realized I wasn't smart enough to, to start an office, but he was desperate. <laughs> well, okay, so you're coming to Chicago. How did you decide to live in Oak Park? <clears throat> well, we, Arthur, Arthur said, listen, Lamar, go out there with Lisa this weekend. I mean, this is like three days, you know, after he, after he, after he mentioned it to me. And I said, Arthur, I, you know, I've got some things going on this week. And he said, well, get out there as soon as you can. So we, we came out a couple of weeks later and we got a hold of a realtor and we saw 53 houses wow. in, in three days. Uh, we would drive up to a house and, and uh, I'd say, keep driving. And the realtor would say, oh, it's really lovely inside. I said, it wouldn't matter. Um, and so the 53rd house we saw was the one we're in right now. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and so we ended up in Oak Park, uh, you know, because it was midway between Midway and O'Hare and the McDonald's uh, corporate campus where we were doing uh, work with their uh, corporate, uh, their corporate offices. Well, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. So it wasn't that you, like others who said, oh, I wanted to live in this particular community. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize that Oak Park was, was the home to 6,000 other architects. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I get really surprised you when I, I bump into architects and I'd say, what are you doing? They'd say, I'm an architect. And I'd say, wow, I'm an architect. And, the, and they'd say, well, of course you are. <laughs> um, you grew that Gensler office from nothing to how many when you left? When I got here, we had four people. Um, and I can remember sitting around a, a small table and I said, I said, this is our first staff meeting. Let's remember it because we're going to grow. We're going to be impactful. We're going to make a difference here. And all, all four of them said, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, but, uh, but we, uh, through, through, uh, you know, a lot of luck and, and, uh, some breaks, uh, we grew the office and we, and we, and we got a pretty good, uh, footing in the market. Uh, when I left, uh, three years ago, uh, we had 350 people in the Chicago office and another 100 people in, uh, in other offices around the, uh, around the Midwest that, that ultimately reported up through me. So with all that success, you still decided to go out on your own. What was that like for you? Um, it was both the, uh, the most rewarding uh, thing that I've, I've done recently and the most terrifying. Um, I learned a couple of, of great lessons uh, early on. One is that uh, 
that cash flow is really an important ad, uh, element of any business and that you can't lose money on every transaction and make up for it with volume. Uh, so so I, I learned the basics of business even though I have an MBA. Uh, and I also learned that, uh, that, that, that people I had worked with for 18 or 20 years uh, were willing to, to take a chance with me uh, and, and so 24 people left uh, my former firm and, and uh, joined me in my, my new firm, which was incredibly rewarding at a personal level and professionally, it, it just made all the difference. What kind of pressure did that put on you though? You've got 24 mouths to feed, right? Well, um, yes, uh, it, it did. I was very fortunate that Lisa, my wife, uh, had, a, had a very senior position at a, at a, at a large national bank, and, and she left that to become our, our COO and CFO. I think she did it because she didn't trust me on my own and knew that I would ultimately you know, bankrupt the, the, the company in our, in our house, so she did it out of self-survival. But well, I know Lisa pretty well. She's a very wise woman. Oh uh, yeah, with, without her, we—I mean, trust me, uh, we would have—we would have been open ten days, and people would have wondered where their checks were, and I would have told them I didn't—I don't know, and that—that that would have been the end of it. Right, 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 right. Well, we probably have people in the audience uh, who've got grandkids or maybe kids who have talked about becoming architects. So, what what do you look for when you're hiring an architect? Um, well, I, I, you know, it's probably not a lot different than, than maybe some other roles. I, I look for people that are curious uh, and, and want, you know, and want to learn and discover new things. I, 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 uh, I also place a high value on people that, that can actually carry on a conversation. Um, you know, many times you get into an interview or a meeting with somebody and, and and you just get to a point where there's a, a long pregnant pause and they just don't have anything to say. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, you know, I look for people that, that are confident in themselves uh, and, that, uh, and that, can, that can carry themselves well. I, I think the most important thing though is, is, is curiosity. Is that, uh, by that, do you mean like they're interested in uh, learning different things about the whole architectural panoply of things you well I, I think it's a I think it's a great trait for anyone to have to be curious about life um, and to and to continue to want to learn uh, and educate themselves and and find out about things they don't know about because uh, that's what that's what makes life interesting and and I think that's a a fundamental asset that architects need because you need to constantly renew uh, your knowledge about different things. There's new materials and, and new codes and requirements and every project and every client is new. And if you're not curious, uh, you, you tend to mail in the solution. So one of the things I, I really preach around our office now is love the, love the problem, don't love the solution, uh, which, is, which is our way of saying you know, if you if you if you think you've gotten to a point where you've solved the problem and you and you fall too in love with the solution, you stop trying to make it better. So, uh, so you know, I really I really believe in in loving the problem and not the solution. Does that uh, part of that also that when you talk about curiosity, do you also kind of uh, do you mean curious about what the client's trying to do too and trying to help mm -hmm. unpack? What the, what's, Ab absolutely. what's the real itch? Absolutely. In fact, uh, I think when we're at our best, we, re, we reframe the question and the, the, the ask from the client. Um, clients come to us often and they say, I want this. There's a difference between wanting something and needing something. You, you know, everybody wants a jacuzzi and a, and a wet bar in their office. But, but, but what they really need is, you know, an effective workplace. Right. So, so we try to we try to help our clients understand that difference. Okay. Okay. So uh, I noticed while going over the to the website, uh, your firm works on many different projects. 
many different areas. Is there any particular type of work that you most enjoy at this part, point in your career? Um, well, yes, I, I actually enjoy community, not-for-profit, uh, and uh, uh, community organizations, civic organizations. I, I like them because generally speaking, the people there are committed they're passionate about what the what the organization does. It's like you know the 19th century club. I mean, the people that are involved there are are like minded. Uh, they care about their community and they want to build it. Uh, and there's a I think there's a, a palpable sense of optimism uh, in those groups, and I and I like to feed off that. Uh huh. Okay. Um why don't we take a? Let me take a take us down through a few slides. Tell us a little bit that will tell us a little bit about uh, Lamar Johnson. Oh, but you know that's another thing. How did it end up being collaborative? How did you? Well, that's interesting. I um, I believe in collaboration, and when and uh, uh, when I was thinking about the name, I mean, obviously, I wasn't overly creative with the first two names. I mean, I, I thought. <laughs> I thought my name is Lamar Johnson. How about Lamar Johnson something? Uh, and and I really thought about collaboration because I think that's the way. I think that's the. I, I think it's the most effective way to create uh, long-lasting solutions. I think uh, none of us is as good as all of us. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that that clients understood that I would collaborate with them. That that colleagues would understand I would collaborate with them. The community organizations would understand I would collaborate with them, and I, I wanted to make sure that that was clear, um, and and that that overarches almost everything we do is is the sense of, of collaboration and of of uh, partnering with with our with our clients and colleagues. So this going this kind of ties into the question about what you look for when you hire people. That notion of being collaborative and maybe going outside of your comfort zone to collaborate is something that people, there are good traits to have if they're working for you. Well, it is, and, and there's a, uh, so I, I ask a couple of questions to people. One, I ask them if they like, if they like creating and building something, not, not building a building, but, but just the act of creating something new. And I also tell people uh, uh, early on, we don't accept buttheads. Um, and, if, and, and if you and if you are a butthead, and if you've and if you've gamed me or tricked me in the interview, it will come out. And when it comes out, we won't work together anymore. So I ask people to be really honest with me, and to evaluate whether they think they can fit. Okay, all right. Okay, so uh, I asked Lamar to get put together a few slides of would give us a sense of uh, the of this company and uh, we'll go through them and you can comment on them and I'll probably ask you some questions too. Okay. So, um, so this is just, uh, you know, we can go obviously past this one. Uh, this first slide is, is uh, a picture of, of our firm. Uh, and at this point we're, we're uh, a little over 10 months old. So you can, you can imagine uh, how both exciting and terrifying it was to, to see, you know, how, how much we had grown, but uh, there was a, there was a wonderful energy and a, and a, and a great buzz. And I, I mean, I love these people and, and uh, you know, many of them are still, still with us. So I want the audience to know, just to, to uh, note that down in the front of this picture, there's a blonde woman with her hand up waving and that's, that's Lisa Johnson. The person who saved the firm many times while, while Lamar went out and looked for business. That's right. <laughs> so over here, the... a little, not, two more, a little bit over to the right. There you go. There she goes. There she is. Good. So she's she's the brains. She's absolutely the brains behind the whole organ, the whole organization. No, no question. You certainly have a, a wide range of ages in this group. We do, um, and and that made it. I mean, that made it even better. Um, I mean, it's just, a, it's, a, it's, it's a, it's a fabulous group of people. Uh, so I'm, I think what I'm looking at is a group of risk takers, right? I mean, they, they, they decided that, well, I'm well, 
what I told them was they were all fantastic architects and designers. They didn't display much judgment about where they worked, but <laughs> um, but uh, I I was honored and I and I was truly humbled uh, that that they wanted to join. That's great. That's great. Well, why don't we go to the next slide? And this is just a this is a. Um, a shot of our new office, uh, which is at the Jewelers Building at 35 East Wacker. Uh, it, it, you know, it's a it, it's a lovely area, and, and it's it's got a very large, gracious uh, reception area <clears throat> because I wanted to make I want to make sure that people felt comfortable when they when they came to our office. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, I, are people in the office now, given the COVID? <laughs> We have we have been going back and forth to the office. Not all of us. Uh, some people have have risks uh, that that keep them at home, uh, and uh, so we probably have uh, maybe a third to a half of our of our our folks are in the office at any one time, uh, and and you know that works out fine. We've we've learned how to accommodate Zoom and and Skype and all the endless meetings like we're doing right now. Uh, I, I long for, you know, sort of human interaction and, yeah. and uh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to be able to hug or shake hands with some of our folks, uh, but that will come in time. Okay. All right. Can we move to the next slide? Yeah. And here's, a, here's an up close uh, and personal shot of, of uh, what can only be described as a horrible wardrobe day for both of yeah, us. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd agree with that. It's, uh... That, that's not the client uh, facing, I hope. No, uh, so so let's go to the next one. So who's who's that with you? Uh, this is Jeremy, um, and uh, uh, he's a he's a young young architect that just absolutely um, is is. If I had to compete against his ability, when I came out of school, I would still be unemployed. <laughs> Um, do you, uh, going back to hiring, do, do you look at particular schools of architecture first? Um, we, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that we overly do. Um, you know, I, I think I learned from my experience that uh, you can get to the, you can get to an effective endpoint. Uh, you can, you can have a, a meaningful career going through a lot of different uh, pathways. So um, I usually, I, I, I judge people much more on, uh, on whether they, as I said, whether they're curious, they have energy, they, they seem interested. I used to, I, I, some clients that I worked with were very high tech clients. And when they found out, uh, when I found out that the head of advanced technology, and this was really advanced technology at the time, was not from a major electrical engineering school, <laughs> uh, I was just shocked. <laughs> but, well, I'll, I'll tell you a, a quick story. When I when I came to Chicago, um, I was invited by the executive director and the president of the AIA, the American Institute of Architects, uh, for for Chicago to go to lunch with them. And 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 they both said, "Listen, you know, you're with this very large firm, and you've just moved to Chicago. We want you to be on the board." And uh, and I said, "Well, I, I said I'm I'm flattered." I said. Uh, and I, and I thought I thought I'd have a little fun with them, so I said, you know, I I already feel like I've got a great rapport with you, and I can trust you. I I, I feel like I need to tell you something. They said what? And I said, I never really graduated from college, <laughs> and 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 they they just froze. And and I said, you know, I'm not really an architect, <laughs> and 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 they just they were just frozen. And they said, are you kidding? I said, yeah, I'm kidding. Of course, I'm okay. Um, and and uh, and they never really. I don't think they ever really got over that, but they did ask me to join the board. <laughs> it's a so, so for all those uh, all those people that are out there, I am registered. I, I am a registered architect. I actually graduated from college, and I am I'm, I'm registered in forty two states. So okay, all right, all right. It's just another one of those bold jabs that you like. I know that I know that from you, you being my neighbor. Let's move on to the next one. So All this right, is what's going on here, Lamar. Well, you know, I, as I said before, you know, the, the thing I'm most proud of is that we, we, our firm have a, a wide range of of uh, institutions that that we deal with, um, and and I'm particularly proud of the work we do in the community. So this is just a listing of, 
things we've done in Austin and with Harold Washington Library and Adler Planetarium and Crystal Ray High School and, and a whole host of others. Um, and and I, 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 think, uh, I think it's one of the things that architects in particular should participate in. Uh, we have a unique ability to, to help uh, uh, change uh, institutions, improve them, make them better. We have a, new, a unique skill set that, that, uh, that I think is very valuable to these folks. And I also think we have a responsibility and obligation to, to serve our communities. Uh, so, so this is just a, it's just a kind of a snapshot of, of a number of the not-for-profits and civic uh, organizations that we work with. Well, it looks like uh, we could, we don't have the time. Uh, I could, you know, we have to let the, the presidential debate get in our way here, but it looks like we could talk about for quite a while about some of these projects. Well, it's been, I mean, it, it, it has been such a source of pride for me and, and uh, you know, I, I just, I, I love this. In fact, uh, just, you know, quickly, I was, the, I've, I've been the vice chairman uh, of the Adler Planetarium. And while I was the vice chairman there, uh, one of the staff members came up to me and, and asked whether I would, whether I'd be willing to go to Washington, D.C. To, to check in with our congressional delegation. And, I, and I, I said, you know, tell me what the details are and when it is. And she said, and by the way, you'll be going with Captain Lovell on, on, on Apollo, Apollo 13. And I said, I said, yes. So Captain Lovell and I went out to Washington, D.C., three or four years in a row and, and met with the congressional delegation. And I, I assure you that if it was Lamar Johnson and, the, and, and that was all they were gonna meet with, I would still be there waiting for someone to open the door. But with, with Captain Lovell, uh, you know, the door swung open wide and, and uh, we got to meet with, with many people that uh, Senator Durbin and Senator Kirk and and all the representatives and and uh, it was really it was an honor to travel with them. That's great, that's great. Um, I I'm, I'm just, I, we should move on, but I want to ask about a couple things here. The Gold Star Families Memorial Park. Where is that? Uh, it's in uh, it's at the uh, the football at the Bears Stadium. Oh, at the uh, Bears. Okay. And uh, it it commemorates uh, it commemorates the uh, the. Uh, Canines and the, and the equines, the, the oh. dogs and horses that have that have served uh, the police. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks. Why don't you? Why don't we move on? Um, this is a this is a recent uh, uh, project that we were we were invited to become involved in. It's a it's a pop up park. We call it Pop Courts. It's at Chicago Avenue and Lockwood. So if any of you are familiar with that? It's it's uh, close to Central, uh, and we we designed it so that it could be. It's a it's an empty lot right now, and, and we designed it for for community activity. Uh, we've actually gone to uh, CDOT, the um, Chicago Department of Transportation, and and gotten them to approve us painting the intersection. Let me tell you, I mean, I've worked on high rises that got easier approvals. <laughs> Than, than this, and I'm I'm and I'm I'm grateful uh, for CDOT's willingness to uh, to let us express across the intersection. But uh, the next uh, picture, I think, is another one that will show a, a little different view of it. Uh, there's actually a grand. Oh, wow. there's, there's actually an opening uh, this Saturday morning. We're going to have the uh, the uh, gr uh, groundbreaking uh, for this. Uh, we're doing it in conjunction with uh, United Way of Chicago, and and uh, we're we're just we're thrilled about this. We're really excited about it. And it would seem like it would be the sort of idea that you could do all over the city. There are a lot of vacant lots. Absolutely. Lives. And and I I actually I I'm I'm more proud of this than I am of of, of uh, almost anything because it will make a difference in that community. And, uh, and, and that I think is, is uh, the highest uh, calling you can have. That's really cool. That is really, really cool. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this, is, this is a project that uh, we did at the Adler. Uh, let me just, uh, for transparency's sake, I am not related to Samuel C. Johnson. Uh, that, would be, 
It'll be SC Johnson out of out of uh, Milwaukee. And, I've never seen, yeah. Yeah, and and I I wish I were a, a, a you know a family member, but uh, it's coincidental. But we we redid this uh, prior to uh, another another element with the space program at the Adler, uh, which was the uh, the anniversary, the 40th anniversary of Apollo 17, uh, and uh, and that mission. So. Uh, uh, Captain Cernan was was with us along with uh, 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 Commander Captain Lovell. So anyway, we we did this as a pro bono thing because frankly, uh, the Adler didn't have enough money to to get it done. So we 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 did it. We provided our services for free, and they were able to spend more money on the actual build out of this. That's great. That's great. Uh, so, what, it reminds me of the issue though that we have at the 19th century club i noticed the theater and it's you know getting people congregating is a tough thing it's going to be a tough thing for a while i know no it's it's changed everything uh, yeah. yep okay so, next next slide <clears throat> this is the mcdonald's headquarters that i i worked on at my previous firm <clears throat> um, this is on the old the old side of the harpo studios oh okay uh, and uh, in the West Loop, <clears throat> we did this with Sterling Bay as the developer and uh, McDonald's uh, took the whole building and, and moved from Oak Brook uh, down here. It's been a very successful move for them and, and it was a great project for us to be involved in. On this project, um, we, uh, Andy Glor from, from Sterling Bay called me and he said, I said, all right, I have a tenant for the building. He wouldn't tell me who it was. And he said, we need to go. And I said, all right, when, you know, when's the tenant going to occupy? He said, 26 months. And we didn't have the drawings done. We didn't have a demolition permit. Uh, the Harpo students were still up. Uh, and so it was a real, uh, just an unbelievable uh, schedule and tempo. But, but uh, you know, we obviously got it done and it's been very successful. That's great. That's great. So we move on. Yep. Okay. And, uh, this this looks like a sleek building. Yeah. This is a uh, this is a project uh, for Goodyear in, in Akron, Ohio. Uh, also the home of LeBron James, uh, yeah. uh, who actually probably I think is worth more than Goodyear now. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is a great project. Uh, you know, I was, I was fortunate over my years, uh, my previous firm that I got to, I got to work around the country and, and really uh, around the world on, on uh, projects like this. And uh, so for a, for a kid from, uh, from the rural country of Minnesota and Colorado, uh, that, that's, that's pretty, pretty uh, big stuff. That's great. That is great. Okay, move on. It's yeah. And uh, this is, uh, the, the, we do a lot of uh, interiors. Uh, we do buildings and interiors also. This is a, a project with, with John Buck, who uh, is, is an, uh, I think, a legend and an icon in the real estate industry. He's, John Buck is the person that, that leased the Sears Tower originally when it was called the Sears Tower. Um, and, and we went through a lengthy, uh, lengthy, uh, competition on this and and uh, he called me after we presented and he said Lamar I've got some bad news for you and I and I, I just I couldn't even speak I, I was because we had poured so much into this he said against my my direction the selection committee has chosen another architect and I and I, I just I couldn't speak and he said well let me, wait a minute let me let me read the memo again so he, he's got he's got paper in the background good and, and he said, you know what? I misread that. <laughs> You're the one that we're gonna hire and the other architect's the one that we're not gonna hire. And, and I said, really? And he said, let me read it one more time. So he pulls his paper out and he goes, he said, that's right, that's what we're doing. We're hiring you. He said, listen, I gotta go, click. So the next time I saw him, I said, you've got a nasty sense of humor. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Okay, let's move on. It's a great story, though. Uh, this is Fulton East, which uh, is a building that's that's uh, coming online right now. 
uh, that we did for Bob Whistlow, also an icon in the industry. And the, the interesting thing about this is it's, it's, it's really been uh, put together and it's got systems that are, that make it pandemic resistant. I mean, nothing's, cool. nothing is, is pandemic proof, but it, it has a, a number of systems and some are, are kind of interesting. It's got a, it's got a foot tap to call the elevators. So ah. you, can actually, you can actually call the elevators without using your hands. Uh, and it's got a lot of other innovations in it. Uh, and as I said, we're just completing that. So uh, this, is a, this is a current effort. But you must have really been designing that building quite a while ago, and yet right. you went in and readapted it in terms of COVID protection. Correct. And that's exactly right. And, and so, you know, one of the things that we did was, you know, luckily the platform of the building and the systems were flexible enough that we could, we could engage uh, other options, even during construction, which is what we did. Uh, so you're right, you're absolutely right. Uh, we had to depend on the flexibility of the, of the, uh, the building itself. Okay, you got another slide there for us. Oh yeah, this looks interesting. Tell us about yeah. this. This is Triangle Square, which is uh, uh, a new housing project uh, that, that we're dealing with uh, right now. It's uh, it's under construction and. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's just notable that uh, um, we're trying to do some, some different things with, with the angles and with the geometry. And, uh, and you'll notice that it's got its requisite, you know, generous uh, space for amenities, uh, right. which is represented on the right side. Uh, this, is, this is actually going to be one of the projects near Lincoln Yards that... Uh, I suspect we'll get a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, attention when it opens up, but uh, this is a this is one that I uh, I'm, I'm very proud of. That's let's great. Go, let's go to the next one. Let's see what we've got there. Um, and then, <laughs> oh, and you then, were doing fine until now, Lamar. <laughs> yeah, and then and then you know this is this is one that uh, will be. Um, It'd be interesting to people. It's the Vantage Oak Park uh, that I worked on. Um, when this was when this was in the planning stage, I was at a dinner party uh, with friends of mine from from the church uh, that we attend, and and I was sitting right next to a woman that's that's a very dear friend of mine. And I don't know how we got on the subject, but but she said, "Have you seen the approval of that monstrosity that's on Lake Street?" And I said, "What?" And she said, "I don't know what it's called, but it's a big." a big residential project and I said I said well I don't think it's that bad and she said oh I think it's awful <laughs> and I said I said I'm the architect of that and, <laughs> and she and she laughed she said she's that's really funny I said no it's not I'm really the architect for that <laughs> um and uh so so um we we went to opposite ends of the table and I I know I, I haven't talked to her since then uh, that's actually not true but um, but anyway, I, I think this has actually a, become a pretty successful project, uh, and uh, um, you know it it it, uh, it had a nice to, had a good developer, and they and they they actually uh, I think did a quality job. So I think it's been a, a, a net addition to the to the city. Which well, I, th I think uh, as I watched the project unfold, there were a, a lot of. Uh, it seems like there was a lot of feedback was taken and heard, and uh, the project. I think I think it I think it is a very handsome project at this point. So, thank you for that. So, I think that's our last slide. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. So, we'll move on to a few questions. We got about ten minutes, but then we're going to open it for questions from others. Okay. Um, so, uh, which other than your own work, what buildings or projects in Chicago do you admire? I can't think of one. <laughs> so, um, I, um, you know, I, I thought about this. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, you know, there's there's two projects in particular that I just love. The the modern wing of the Art Institute, I think, is is stunning. It's 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 beautiful, and actually, the building that I think is is probably the most remarkable is the Apple, uh, the new Apple uh, flagship on, uh, on Michigan Avenue. I, I, that, that project is just, 
stunning. I mean, it's so beautiful and, and everything was thought through. Um, it, uh, it's, it's beautiful. I think the, the, uh, the craft that went into that is just amazing. So is that one of those things where you kind of looked at it and said, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Oh, I, I look at it and I think I couldn't even conceive of that. Um, okay. I mean, it, it's it's just it's it's all it's all so 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 stunning. So okay, um, we did we touched on this a little bit, but you said that doing architecture is about solving problems. Can you give an example or two of that? Um, I can give you. I, I'll give you one that's that's uh, pretty simple. Um, I was on a job. Uh, during the punch listing, when, the, when we were finishing up the project, and I, I ran into one of the people that was that was in their office, and, and and this woman said, "I need a drill," and I said, "You need a drill? What do you need a drill for?" And she said, "Because I need to put a hole in my desk," and I said, "What's the hole for?" And she said, "Because I need to I need to snake a." a, a a phone line through it because I don't have a phone on my desk and I'm, I'm not near an outlet. And I said, ah, I said, what you, what you need is the needs and wants. So what you need is the ability to communicate with your clients and your colleagues. You don't need a drill. <laughs> um, and I said, so the problem is we got to find a way to get you connected. And she said, okay, I'll buy that. Um, so, so, you know, make this work. So um, I think uh, I, I think I think of, of architecture as, as as a way to solve problems, and I think of architecture as as an as a as an an unbelievable expression of optimism. Nobody builds a project or renovates if they don't feel like there's a reason, a positive reason to do it. I mean, you know, you don't you don't see people saying. Well, you know, I'm down on my luck. I don't like this area. I, I dislike my neighbors, but you know, I'm going to go ahead and build up. <laughs> um, so, so I, I, you know, there, there's a, there's a sense of, of, of optimism and, uh, and enthusiasm that goes with architecture that, that uh, I think is, is wonderful. Um, uh, Lamar, I'm going to change tax a little bit. Uh, your career's involved a lot more than architecture and your firm has done significant amount of pro bono work. What does that say about what you believe in how you were raised? Um, well, I, I, I think I recognize that, that, uh, that first of all, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate and very lucky and blessed to, uh, to have had the opportunity to be an architect, to, to have the opportunity to, to work with a wide range of people and uh and it it it, it probably ultimately is just an expression of the fact that that i i believe that i i owe some of that back to other people and, and that's why i i'm so invested in pro bono uh work because uh you know i didn't get here on my own uh uh i'm not a self-made uh you know a person i i i i only am here through the the grace of, of uh, you know, strangers that, that helped me along the way. So, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I feel like it's, it's a responsibility and obligation to, to give back. So uh, that's the giving back part of it. But I want to ask you about one specific project, which I think has probably got a lot more than just giving back to it. Talk a little bit about the Big Ed Bowl. Oh. Well, Big Ed was uh, um, he was a colleague of mine uh, that uh, unfortunately had had a, a rare uh, version of skin cancer and and uh, and passed away from it. I told his uh, his at his uh, at his wake, uh, which by the way his wake was at uh, the New Rebozo. We closed the whole restaurant down and, and we actually ran up a an eight thousand dollar tab. Um, so he would have been proud. Um, <laughs> But um, uh, but I told his his widow that, that we would that we would begin uh, a fundraiser for cancer research. It it ultimately morphed into a fundraiser for cancer research and for Parkinson's. Uh, and uh, over the last fourteen years, we've raised a little over a million and a half dollars. Uh, so it's uh, 
you know, it's a, it's something that's near and dear to me and, and, uh, and it, it helps me remember Ed. But what is it exactly? The Big Ed Bowl is a, it's a fundraiser for the design, construction and real estate industry. Uh, Ed loved to bowl, so we bowl. Ah. Um, and, uh, um, and, and, you know, we do a lot of other, other things. Uh, uh, but uh, it's really, it's about, it's, about, it's about bowling and about having fun. And it's about, about coming together as, a, as, the, as the industry. Uh, there's four, 400, 450 people who come to it. Wow, that's great. That yeah, no, great. It's, it's, it's really wonderful. I, uh, I learned when I came to Chicago that, that Chicago, I think, has got the most generous uh, uh, industry around. Uh, for philanthropy and, and for uh, uh, helping out non for profits uh, uh, that I'm aware of in anywhere around the country. I, I've been in a lot of different cities and, and uh, Chicago, I think, is distinguished among all of them for, for, for its generosity uh, with, with other, other causes. And so I, I learned early on that, you know, that was expected of me. Right. Okay. Great. Well, it's about quarter after. Um, we, we, uh, it's about time. Aaron, why don't you come back in and see if we have any questions or comments? Great. Well, that was, ah, can you guys see me? I feel like I'm You're very- all white. You're whited out yeah, there. I, I can see you look like a sunspot just happened right looked, over there. <laughs> all of a sudden, I looked very young. I liked that. That was amazing. Um, well, I do have a question and I am going to unmute uh, Susan Roberts so she can ask it. I was one of the people, I'm a neighbor and uh, of the Vantage building. So I was one of the people that fought it vehemently. And I think one of my real pet peeves is these architectural drawings and the Vantage drawing that you show has all this grass around it and trees around it, and the building is built up to the sidewalk. You know, um, right. I, I think that's very, very deceiving, and I wish architects wouldn't do that. So why? I mean, so how did that the happen? Question is why do you do that? How did well, it happen? Well, there's a. Um, uh, I suppose that that ultimately we we felt like. Uh, the the urban fabric that's on either side of that of that building is also built up to the to the street line and and uh, and frankly we thought that it made and this is kind of talk architecture but um, but but ultimately we felt like like the building wanted to be on the lot line uh, and and uh, on the sidewalk line adjacent to its its uh, neighbors on either side of it. Uh, and that, uh, that, and and also, you know, I suppose you have to realize that it's a capitalist invent, uh, uh, you know, endeavor, right? And the developer wants to maximize their their square footage, and and so we try to do it as as respectfully as we could. So um, I have a question, if I may. Absolutely, um, you may. What for a, an architecture firm of your size? What is the the smallest project you would take on? Um, there, there is no, there's no, there's no size. In fact, um, I would tell you that you know many architects uh, believe that they 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 build projects. Um, I try to invest and build relationships. Um, I think relationships are are what endure. Uh, projects come and go. Uh, and, and so if a client comes to me and they say, you know, you did an office building for us and now I need for you to, I need for you to switch the door swing in my office. Will you do that? I always say yes. And people in my office will ask why and I'll say, because if you don't take advantage of that uh, and you don't honor the relationship, somebody else will do it for you and then they will have the relationship. So if you honor the relationship first, it doesn't matter what the size of the work is. That's great. That's great. And I think that's a good lesson, regardless of what field of work you're in, um, is, you know, really relationship building is the key to success with so many, 
so many it is. In so many different instances in your life so it's really no hard. it's it, it's i i believe that absolutely in my heart mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, here. go ahead I, I do have a question for you uh another one how has covid affected how you go about your business and what you design from a design standpoint so there's two sides to that. One is is how we do our work, and the other is what work we're doing. Right. Um, and the how we're doing our work is we've we've learned as everybody else has that uh, that you need to be on Zoom calls and WebEx and Team and and ad nauseum. Um, and we've learned how to be productive and effective uh, from, from remote locations now. It, it, it has taken a while, but we've learned how to do that. Um, I, I, I think that it's, it's not as, uh, it's not as rewarding to, to do that because you don't have the, you just don't have the chance to build the personal rapport and to just goof around and, and, uh, have sidebar conversations and, and all the things that I think are, are what makes us human. Um, but we've we've learned how to overcome that. That's on the that's on the doing the, the work side on on actually getting the work, uh, or or actually what kind of work we're doing. Many of our projects are now on pause. That's like the worst word I can hear. <laughs> you know, when a client calls up and says, "You know, Lamar, we're going to pause our project now," uh, and and there's been a lot of that, uh, and and you know. Uh, it's, it's been rough. Uh, architecture is sort of the canary uh, of the industry. We're the first ones uh, to get hit either with a lot of new work because the, the economy is surging or the opposite, which is going on right now, the economy is contracting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so it's, 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 been, it's, it's been tough. Yeah, and again, you're saying something that could reach across a lot of different fields in industries right now too. Um, hearing that word pause is uh, definitely right. being heard a, very close to home in all sorts of different places. Um, well, I, but I will tell you that 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 relationships uh, help you get through that. Um, people tend to tend to to bond and and and. Uh, and close ranks with the people they trust and that, that have been there for them before. And so uh, we've been very fortunate that we, we have great relationships around town because we've, we've uh, taken time to, to honor those folks and, and to do the things that we said we would do. Um, and so uh, you know, we're very lucky to have the work that we do have. Right, because if one project falls through, it doesn't mean that there won't be five down the line, that if you keep that relationship strong, it's, right. it's gonna be there. Yeah, at least that's what I that's what I hope, Aaron. <laughs> I, I, I'm your biggest supporter, Lamar. I think you're gonna be just fine. <laughs> well, that, that's kind of you. We we've, we've been we've been very fortunate, and uh, uh, relationships uh, have have endured. So uh, you know we're 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 very lucky. Well, well, Lamar, I want to thank you so much for doing this. It's been a lot of fun for me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Aaron, we'll turn this back over to you at this point. Awesome. Well, I'll just keep you guys on. I just have one last thing to say, and that's just thank you so much for coming out tonight. Um, this has just been such a fun series, learning about our neighbors and about you know people who are living in Oak Park, but also just learning about different fields. Uh, I think it's been educational in general. Um, so if you like this program, you can go to www.19thcentury.org and learn more about what we have upcoming. We have a regular Monday series every afternoon, Monday afternoon at 1.30. And if you want to help make this program even stronger in all of our programs, you can make a donation right on our homepage, www.19thcentury.org. Well, thank you so much on behalf of Al and Lamar and everybody at the 19th Century. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.